Hey everyone, welcome to the Withering Effect episode 133. Today's date is February 27th, 2022, and I am Duds, or Duds versus Gnomes, to the rest of the interwebs. And I am Jimbo, you may know me as Jimbo Slice 23 So what have you been up to this week, Duds? Farming. <laughs> I really wanted to take advantage of the light block we have on Ripple Effect. Now, the light block is in the game in creative mode. Mainly for map makers, there's no real way to have it in survival mode. Unless you got a winter. We got a winter who's creating tons of crazy, awesome data packs. And one is... Winter Graves, not the season. <laughs> yeah, not just the season. Though he can make winter on the server. I am 99% sure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure of it. But yeah, so he's created a data pack that allows us to access the light block. I think it's one amethyst shard and eight glow lichen i'm not sure the recipe but that sounds about right yeah so basically this entire episode was dedicated to being able to farm that i found two geodes really close to well technically three but the third one was so far out of the way i just didn't even bother including it in the build mm -hmm. so i found two relatively close to each other and i built a nice little room that has a glow lichen farm and stuff built into it and then i also built a glow squid farm in the same area because it's so deep down in the Ooh. world they spawn and okay glow squid spawning is a little messed up really oh yeah hmm. unless they've changed stuff that i don't really know about one you remember how you used to have to have stone nearby for the glow squid to spawn yeah don't have to have that anymore it helps didn't know they changed that. The other thing is, you know how it needs to be complete uh, darkness? Mm hmm Now, I'm getting glow squids spawning in a tank that has a light level of 10. Mm. Like everywhere. It's not, even, it's not even two or three. It's a light level 10, and these glow squids are spawning in there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, like... They had to change something. Yeah, I've got this, what I call the glow squid tank that's got oxalotls in there swimming around to kill them. And then I've got a fish tank where the fish you quote unquote saved and put in my mm -hmm. <laughs> my boat hole. Yep, I saved them. I, I saved those fish out of that hole. Good. And put them in their own aquarium. Hey. And it's all nice and cool and stuff. And then the, the glow squid spawn in there. And uh, also all the fish that you saved despawned. Really? They were doing fine in that hole, right? Yeah, they stayed in that hole forever, and then down there, I don't know if it's something to do with the lush cave biome or what. Maybe. At first, I thought it was oxalotl spawning in that tank and just killing the fish. Oh, okay. Because that, that does happen. They need that light level lower, right? The oxalotl? Uh, they don't care what light level they spawn in. Oh, I thought it was lower light level. Well, it might be, but <laughs> the way things are happening, I don't know. Yeah, squid are kind of ignoring it. Yeah, I tried to save all your fish, and they died or disappeared. Disappeared sounds better. Yeah, <laughs> sounds better. I'm okay with that. Yeah, but it, it was a fun little time building. I got back to not having to worry about exterior builds. Like, I don't know why I keep forcing myself to build exterior-style buildings. It's always such a struggle for me, and it really takes a lot of the fun out of the game for me. I just find myself continually dig underground and build something. So I need to think about this going forward in my season. Like my entire season was supposed to be around this woodland village I was building. And now I'm like, I'm getting tired of building exterior builds. Yeah. I've got like three buildings and that's it. It's always nice to like jump outside your comfort zone a little bit, do some things different. But there's always like, I don't know, there's always something that you really enjoy that you really like that you've been doing mm -hmm. that kind of takes you back there. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same situation you are. There's things I want to do above the surface that I haven't got to yet because I'm more comfortable and I'm having a lot more fun building farms in the ground and it just seems to fit a lot better. It's less, mm -hmm. I don't know, less frustrating. I can mold a build underground. Yeah. Right. And above ground, it's you have to create from nothing. Mm -hmm. The inside and the outside have to mm -hmm. be detailed in that sense. Yeah. Uh, but that's it for my week right now. My video will hopefully be out 
early next week. I think I only have like five minutes left in it. Okay. I was saving that to work on the Blaze Farm with Carl, but he hasn't had time this week, and I haven't felt up to it this week. Work absolutely kicked my butt this week. We were shorthanded like half the week, so I was straight up exhausted. I didn't even stream on Friday. I came home, and I think I fell asleep at my desk at 8 o'clock before waking up at 11 and realizing I needed to go to bed. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was not fun. Yeah, that's been my week. How about you? Well, early last week, after we recorded, actually, went out Monday to Amish Country Mm -hmm. with my sister-in-law and her husband. Um, We had a really good time, actually. They had a cabin, really nice cabin, and uh, just got to see some things around there. I don't know. There's a lot of shops, a lot of thrift stores, things they make, and uh, no, it, it was it was a good time just hanging out at the cabin. Mm-hmm. I did kind of get a sore throat out there, you know, probably from going place to place, and uh, ended up getting a sore throat, and I actually, I was sick the past few days, and uh, yesterday I was really sick, and I didn't think I was going to be here this morning, but here I am feeling a lot better, a lot better, still a little bit under the weather, but feeling pretty good, but uh, yeah, just wanted to mention that, you know, I went out to Amish country, it was a lot of fun, didn't really get any pictures, or else I could have shared some of those. But uh, it's really cool to see the way they live and how they pretty much make everything. Mm-hmm. Um, we have we got some really good ranch that they made, like homemade ranch. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Anyways, besides that, besides the food and all the other stuff, Minecraft wise, I built two farms in my base. Did this all within that one day. I was out of Amish country, didn't have time to record because I was away, and I was there for a couple of days, and I got back and end up making this episode in almost one day besides the editing but you know just recording back and forth and i didn't i did it again i didn't stop and do my editing after recording stuff and it kind of mashed up into the episode and i got really late in the episode and then i was editing kind of shortened it down a little bit i don't know it's always a mess always ends up a mess if you don't stop and edit after you record some clips yep but uh it all it all came together in the end. It just it seemed like a lot more effort than if I were to just record after clips. But ended up finishing that. It's coming out. Came out this morning. It is Sunday. You'll be hearing this Wednesday. But yeah, make sure to check that out. Built two two farms, and I did some redstone on my own. Some of it I'm, pr- I'm proud of. Most of it I'm not. So hopefully, hopefully you get to see that. Yeah, that's kind of the way this episode went for me. Uh, I was. The first 10 minutes, I was like, I'm going to dedicate to doing this glow block farming area. And I'm 15 minutes into it now. And I go, well, I can't start another big project today. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to have to do something smaller. Yeah, I have, plenty, I have plenty of time in the episode just to do my sugarcane farm. But not while not editing, I went in and threw the kelp farm in because I didn't think I had much recorded. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I didn't even need the kelp farm in this episode to make it a full episode. Yeah. But I ended up throwing it in at the end real quick and uh, showing some things. What does it say? The differences in our styles. I built a sugarcane farm. First minute, 30 seconds of the video. That's it. Done. Moving on. <laughs> you built a sugarcane farm. Could take the entire episode if you really wanted it to. Yeah. Well, I, I was doing a lot of redstone on my own, which is something I'm, I haven't done in a while. Yeah. And uh, it's actually a lot of fun trying to figure some things out i i I have fun it's like a puzzle to me with the redstone you know you just gotta put all the pieces in place to get the contraption to do what you want it to do and uh when you figure that out there's nothing better so exactly i ended up figuring out what i had to do and uh works great you'll see well should we get into the news uh yeah a little bit of news (laughs) little bit just a little not being sarcastic this time guys it quite literally is just a little bit Mm -hmm. so 118.2 118.2 has a release candidate, and whenever we see release candidates, that means like it's right around the corner to being put out there. I have mm-hmm. a feeling it's going to come Monday or Tuesday. We're going to see the 1.2 or 118.2 release. Yeah, it's it's mainly a lot of bug fixes, and then moving a lot of structures and biomes and stuff with this new tagging feature. Uh, Winder was talking a little bit about it. It to, from what he says, it's a huge thing. That's going to help a lot of map builders. He's super excited for using it. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to uh, wait and see. But there were like two bug fixes for this release, such as some of the custom dimensions 
uh, the settings would cause the server to stop running but not crash, hmm. which is a little weird. And then uh, some of the world gen data packs can kill internal internal servers. So yeah, not sure what a lot of that means other than it's obviously not good. All right. Yeah, we haven't had any of those issues, but nice to be fixed. Yeah. I don't know if Ripple Effect's going to like immediately update to 1.2. I don't think it's going to affect us much. Yeah, I, but. I'm usually on board for, you know, wait for replay mod and Optifine to catch up. Exactly. Before switching over. We use those tools so often. Yeah, and we actually have, you know, server data pack that relies on Optifine. So if it's not compatible yep. 18.2, then there's no reason to switch over. Yeah, but where we've been finding more interesting news is from Twitter. Yeah, King B Dogs, actually. Yeah, I'm just going to take a couple of snippets from some of the things he has tweeted mm -hmm. lately. Um, the first thing being, it sounds like I was correct in the fact that they don't like the loot in the ancient cities. As he tweeted out, loot in ancient cities just isn't worth the risk of encountering wardens right now. So to me, that makes it feel like, yeah, the loot was just a placeholder, that it is going to be better. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty, that's a pretty big tweet. You know, what we were saying that, what is it, sneak, swift sneak mm -hmm. just isn't worth going down there. There has yeah. to be more than just that, because that's the only thing unique down there that you can get. Yeah, and what says even more is the fact that we both said swift sneak is going to be one of those you need to have enchantments, mm -hmm. but yet it's need to have, but not worth encountering a warden. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that you have to put it on your boots is, uh, you know, it takes away a lot of enchantments, but we also have a tweet from King B Dogs that has actually stated that Swift Sneak needs to be on leggings. Yes. We mentioned that, and I, I'm pretty sure he's, uh, they're looking into that, you know, putting it on the lading, leggings instead of the boots. A lot of people have been stating Swift Sneak should be on leggings, and I think it's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they are also thinking it's a good idea. So, yes. Yeah, when you sneak around, you kind of, you know, you, you do the bend, and uh, that requires your knees to bend. So it would just make more sense to be on the leggings. And the leggings don't have its own unique uh, enchantment. You know, there's nothing really unique about it. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, talking about the loot again, mm -hmm. I think the loot has to be better than in-city loot to be worth it. Oh, okay. That's just my opinion. I'm looking for a unique item. I mean, yeah, there, there's a swift sneak. I'm pretty sure that's the only place you can get it is in the deep, deep dark. But I don't know something, something more than that. You know, there's another piece of loot down there that people need to get in order to advance in the game. I'm thinking something to help with deep slate mining. That's I don't know. That's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of uh, the ancient cities and loot. Maybe something to help us with deep slate mining. Now I'm gonna be on. Uh... The other side of that, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people were like, I need instant mine for Deep Slate. I've not had a problem digging out Deep Slate with Efficiency 5. Yeah, it's not instant mine, but I found I don't I don't take the time to set up a beacon unless it's a massively huge dig. Yeah, that's true. But I agree with you, like, unique items would be really nice. Mm -hmm. Question is, like, you think of in-cities, you have shulker boxes and elytra those are two of the biggest items in the game right how do you beat that in the deep dark well i should say ancient cities because deep dark isn't an ancient city is in the deep dark but an ancient city doesn't have to be in every deep dark right yeah and i don't think i don't think it's supposed to be end game type of structure i mean the end is what it is it is what it, it's the end yeah i feel like you should get the best loot from there Oh. Having said that, you know, the ancient cities, I mean, you can get there before the end. Why would you get the best loot before you get to the end of the game? Yeah. But there's also you know, that room with the frame that could be a portal. You know, maybe you need something from the end to bring back to open this portal up to then advance even further through the portal, <laughs> which then could get the end game material. I don't know, just spitballing. You walk through the portal into Minecraft 2. Yeah, everything's round-shaped too far. <laughs> we went too far. Too far, Jimbo, too far. Mm -hmm. but yeah, King B-Dogs, is he's keeping up with the community a lot. I love it. He's mm -hmm. you know, always tweeting out 
different things, questions, and he's usually got the answers. There's there's some things he tweets out. I'm like, is he allowed to tell us this? <laughs> That's how helpful <laughs> yeah. he's been. Yeah, uh, and the, he mentions that ancient cities are really nice and stuff, but they're having a lot of problems with aquifers and other biomes colliding mm-hmm. with the ancient cities that are ruining some of the experiences. And I agree. You're seeing a lot of times a uh, a biome will collide with the ancient city, and you'll get like skeletons and creepers inside an ancient city. Right which should not happen. And now those are setting off the warden. Mhm. I like the fact that, you know, other mobs can do that, but uh yeah, you don't want to get rid of that ability because it would make going after skulk sensors and stuff like that useless to use in other situations. Right. Cuz I know a lot of people who are relying on mobs interacting with those sensors to create farms and games and stuff like that. Right. And it's fun watching the warden chase after bats it really is the other thing is they're not happy with the deep dark biome placement we saw this and i just mentioned it not every deep dark has an ancient city there are blobs of deep dark everywhere and they don't necessarily have to be deep in the world it looks like they're wanting to work on that a little bit not so much blobby like yeah i mean it it has to be below deep slate if you think about i mean anything deep dark would have to be below the normal Y levels, you would think, mm-hmm. in the name Deep Dark. But there's also, you know, the fact that you kind of got to find it randomly. I'm still looking forward to when they're going to give us, if they give us the thing that kind of points you in the direction of the Deep Dark, because we don't have that right now. You kind of got to find it. Yeah. Which is hard. At least the ancient city, you know, Deep Dark, like you said, there's patches and blobs of it around, but. Yeah, the ancient cities seem to be really hard to find. Hopefully, hopefully we can have another way to to find those a lot easier. Yeah, exactly. And a cartography map is the best, easiest fix, I think. Mm -hmm. You're right. I still like the idea of an archaeology dig site. Yeah. Should be like right on top of an ancient city. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, that's kind of all I have for news. Like it was it was a light news week. Mm hmm. We got 118.2 coming, and we had a couple tweets reading into. I hope that, what is it called now? Carl always calls it Caves and Cliffs Part 3, so I never remember the name. Is it the Wild Update? The Wild Update, yeah. Yeah. I really hope that comes out soon, like early summer. Oh. And we're not waiting till late summer for it to release. Yeah. Now, there was a bit of, I couldn't find it again. See, this is the problem. I hope Mojang works on their mojang.net because i want to say there was a release with some uh, mangrove biomes attached to it yeah so we can check those out but i couldn't find news on it it's like the articles will pop up there and then they disappear at the same time and i'm just like Ugh. and i didn't see anyone talking about it either i think i saw a thumbnail it might have been from exuma exuma it might not have been talking about the mangrove trees mm-hmm. it might have even been yeah i think it's pre-release too where they give the mangrove biome review. Okay. 118.2 pre-release 2. Omni was speaking in a live chat saying that it wasn't released. It was just a video by Joppa. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, then I was wrong. So that's why I couldn't find it again, because it wasn't in the news. Still got the same feelings with the mangrove roots. Looks like they didn't change them. Yeah, so far it doesn't look like a ton has changed. Mm-hmm. It does look cool. I mean, it's a different looking swamp. Yeah, they do have a little bit of texture differences. I'm still not a fan of the root block. Like, it looks better. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. The leaves, the leaves I really do like. Those are really cool. Mm-hmm. I can't tell if these are the same old vines or if they're newer vines. they got to be the same vines we already have in the game. The log itself is a decently cool texture. I'm not a fan of the orangish stri- uh, stripped version of it. We already have two oranges in wood types. Yeah. So I kind of feel meh. I, w- I would have kind of hoped for a more grayish stripped texture. That's what I was thinking it would be because it looks a little, I don't know, pale. Yeah, but it's better than it was. I will say that. I'm still just not a fan of the, the root block. But then again, I think once Vanilla Tweaks gets their hand on that texture, you'll see what they do with the uh, 
the bushy leaves. Mm-hmm. And I got a feeling they'll do that with the root block, and that'll make it ten times better. Yeah. Why bushy leaves are not in vanilla Minecraft yet, I don't know. It's like the best thing when it comes to texture packs. Right. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Should we move on to listener comments? Uh, yeah. All right. We've got one from Omni last night. I was playing on the uh, server, and I was like, hey, Omni, uh, we don't have any listener comments. You got something for the show? Or news was a little light this week. You got something for the show. And he made mention that why doesn't the pickaxe have a right-click effect? And if it did, what would it be? Mm. And obviously talking about like how you can use the shovel to make paths. Mm. Well, you used to be able to block with the sword. So a pickaxe, if it had a... Uh, right click effect what would it be and i was trying to think of other ways to use a pickaxe that might make sense and i thought of tamping do you know what tamping is jimbo yeah like compressing right uh at first i thought maybe you could make a path block using the tamping like if you don't want to break out a shovel you could just tamp with your pickaxe it wouldn't be as fast as using the shovel but you'd still be able to do it but the big thing that i thought was really cool would be, say you're standing on a block that has an air gap below it, Mm -hmm. you could tamp that block down one block or one place without having to break out a piston. Ah, kind of just move it. Uh Uh-huh. Maybe you could also do the same thing if it was in a wall. So it would give you the functionality of a piston, but obviously a piston would still be way more useful in 90% of the situations. Yeah, it's kind of like a quick fix. Yeah, if you, if you need a quick fix, you don't want to have to break out a piston or go craft one. You could use your pickaxe and tamp it down or to the side, and it would move it one block. That's not bad. Be useful. I thought that was a really cool idea. Yeah. When I think of pickaxe, I think of you know what it could do. Of course, it breaks blocks. What if uh, you could use it to get the cracked variant of each brick? You know, you just right click. Oh, oh, that's a really good idea, too. I mean, you, you as of right now, you throw it in the smelter, and it cracks it for you. Uh, you use a lot of resources in that sense. You are gain, I think you gain XP that way mm-hmm. anytime the furnace uses it. But, uh, yeah, I just feel like right-clicking with the pickaxe would give it you know, a little ding, crack it, and then you, then you can mine it. It's like a different, you know, you're not quite mining it, you're just cracking it. That's a really good idea. I like that. But that would take the whole smelting away, which I'm okay with. Mm-hmm. You know, usually I don't do that anyway. Yeah. Well, especially now that coal is 10 times harder to come by. Yeah, that too. I had this talk with Casey. It's like redstone and coal are some of the rarest blocks in the game. He actually confirmed what I said earlier. He went mining or whatever, and he found more diamonds than redstone. Yeah. I actually, when I made my storage, I had to go look for more redstone because I ran out. I never pass it up now. I'm down to six blocks of redstone. Or not six blocks, six stacks of redstone. Ooh. I have a good bit now because I never pass it up without mining it now. That and coal. When I put it out there, we have we, we have the uh, the foursome shop that sells redstone components, but they don't sell redstone. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, what's that about? What's that all about? <laughs> what's that about, guys? God, I'm going to have to go make my own wish for <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that question. Obni, that comment came from, well, it, it came from the Ripple Effect server, not the Discord. But the Discord is the only place where you can talk to everyone who works on the show easily. Just take Casey's word for it. Hello there, crafters. Casey Plays here. The Withering Effect Discord is a big part of the show. It's the first place the team look for listener comments, and the only place to vote in Mending Minecraft. If you've been thinking about joining for a while, now is a great time to get involved in our amazing community. Just follow the link in the show notes. Thank you for the Discord ad, Casey. Speaking of the Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in our mending Minecraft vote. This week, we ask you to choose between one of three items for us to discuss and improve, and your choices were name tag, lead, and potions. And the winner of mending Minecraft this week is... Lead. This is a good one here. Yeah, I don't think that was a uh, hard choice. Yeah, yeah, you got a got a good bit to fix here. I know you've been wanting to get your hands on it too. Mm-hmm. But uh, lead had twenty four votes, which was the most. Potions in second with eighteen. That wouldn't have been bad. 
and name tag with 11. Yeah. So a few things on the lead. Leads are tools used to leash and lead passive and neutral animals, golems, and some monsters. Using four string and a small a slime ball crafts two leads in the crafting table. Wandering traders also spawn with two trader llamas, each held with a lead, which can be dropped and collected. Uh, multiple mobs can be held by leads at once, but once mob held once, but each mob held requires its own lead. Man, I can't read today. I just read, I just wrote these out. We'll, we'll blame it on the fact you aren't feeling well. Yeah, we'll blame it on that. With a mob on a lead held by a player, by the player, using the lead on any type of fence. Wait, yeah. Using, jeez, I can't do, I can't read at all, I guess. Using the lead on any type of fence or wall, which is a bedrock thing. Didn't know that. Or, yeah. Attaches the lead to it with a visible knot, tying the mob to it. A lead can be stretched a maximum of 10 blocks before breaking. Okay, that's over with. <laughs> For future reference, Jimbo, your notes, if you put a space between each one of them, it might be easier to read. Like, you guys can't see his notes, but it's just a giant paragraph of text he's having to read through. It's my notes. That's not good. <laughs> There's a dash in there. Whereas, like, you go up to the news and you see line of text, space, line of text, space. <laughs> you can tell the difference in how we make our notes. Well, I'm, yeah, I got limited space here. Well, you can increase the cell size. Ah, who, who wants to do all that? <laughs> all right. So fixing the lead or mending the lead. A lead in Minecraft is super cool. It's a great idea. It's a very useful tool. But it's 10 times more awesome when you get to use it for decoration. Some ideas. Let's change the texture to be more rope-like. I keep wanting to bring ropes into Minecraft, and the easiest way for me to think to do that is to switch up the texture of the lead to be a bit thicker, mm -hmm. be a rope. I don't know how easy this is. I might be saying this, and Mojang does be like, he's nuts. You don't know how hard that is to change that texture. Maybe. I mean, the lead is a rope, so mm -hmm. it'd be nice to have that texture. Yeah, but in the in the realm of it, it looks like string. Yeah. It doesn't look like a rope. Like elastic string. Well, actually, it, it looks more like a rubber band. Yeah. But some of the fixes allow me to click on a fence and drop one end of it. So if I just want that not feature applied to the fence, I can have it. Hmm. Okay. The other thing is to let me tie the rope between two fences. So I can knot it at two ends and have the rope stretched between them. I think this is something everybody wants. Mm-hmm. And then one of the one of the last fun things I kind of had the idea is if you attach a rope to a fence. I say fence because Java can only do fence. I know Bedrock players can do walls too. Think of them in there too. But if you attach a rope to a fence or a lead to a fence, I keep saying rope, and you attach it to a second fence at the same X Z coordinates but different Y value, you're allowed to grab onto the rope and slide down it. Okay. So it would be like the, was it, the weeping vine mm -hmm. or whatever in the nether? What if you could make like a zip line out of it? That'd be a lot of fun. That would be really cool too, but I would say you would need an extra piece of gear. Yeah, you would need another item mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Yeah, those zip lines would be really cool in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people have been asking for the lead to do a little bit more than what it is yeah leads are cool and they can be useful but most people use like food or crafting tables and beds to move things because you can't lead a villager right minecraft mine carts not minecraft mine carts are generally easier to move mobs around too yeah because if you're having to do the same path over and over again just make a mine mine cart path send mobs to there that way because leading them can be a hassle the rope breaks a lot i know it says 10 block thing but like a mob will get distracted and they just randomly stop moving and like come on walk up this one block tall little ledge here man and they, and they won't and it just breaks the lead so you got to walk back and re-lead them mm -hmm. or else they're hanging there mm -hmm. in the middle of the air and if there's another fun fact if they're hanging there they actually gather, yeah, gather 
fall damage as they're hanging there. So wow. As soon as they like hit the ground, Splat. it's pretty much yeah, it's curtains. <laughs> oh man. Here's another thing I didn't see. A lead does not prevent mobs from despawning if they normally would despawn. So hmm. you have a mod mob on a lead attached to something, it might not be there. And see, that doesn't feel right to me. If I tie a mob up with a lead, it shouldn't despawn. Right. And here's another one. I didn't see this. A lead can be used to remove a mob from a boat without needing to break the boat if a mob can normally be leashed. So you're telling me... What? Yeah, if there's a chicken in a boat, I can lead the chicken and just pull him out without breaking the boat. I don't know. That sounds like a bedrock thing. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a Java thing. But then again, I've never tried it, and I've never seen it. So maybe it is. Mm -hmm. I have to give it a shot. Kind of weird. Glad I saw that. <laughs> Science must be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some flaws with the, with the lead. And like I said, I don't want to put it down because I think it is a useful tool. I just see so many other purposes that could make it way more i wouldn't i want to say useful more cooler to use like the decoration side of the lead can be like exponential whereas the tool side of the lead is very small mm -hmm. even if we just got the ability to not a lead around a fence post just that i don't have to hook a mob to it or anything just i can grab a lead and knot it to a fence post that alone is a great decoration feature yeah those aren't bad fixes. I don't really have a fix, and neither does the Discord Looking through there. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the fixes for lead were kind of obvious. Yeah. Yeah, we brought up quite a few times different ways that the lead needs some help. Mm -hmm. But hey, at least they're, uh, <laughs> they're free from your local wandering trader. Right. <laughs> some people are like, oh, no. Gotta get your hands dirty. No, not at all. Sometimes they just break, so. Yeah. That's the problem with leads. Yeah, I've seen a llama walk off a cliff, break his lead. And his leg. Yep. <laughs> Main topic time? We're kind of moving through the show rather quickly today. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's all I got for the lead. All right. So I wanted to talk about how far is too far in vanilla Minecraft. So Ripple Effect this season is pushing boundaries, I should say. Mm hmm In the fact that we're doing a lot of stuff we normally don't do bringing in custom currencies, bringing in custom mobs to carry custom currencies, lots of custom textures being made, a lot of custom items being made, and some of these are to help with the content creation side of it, like we have the weather rod now. Mm -hmm. And what that does is, so Mojang and their infinite wisdom decided to let it rain more, which honestly, when I first heard it, I went, that's fine. It can be a pain in the butt playing on an SMP waiting for the rain. But it rained every other day on the server. And as someone who's trying to record and I have a limited time to record, I can't wait 10 to 15 minutes for the rain to pass because I can't sleep because it decided to start raining in the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. And you can only sleep through thunderstorms, not rain. Right. And I'm just like, ugh. So what Winter has done is he's created the weather rod. Basically, we've turned the weather cycle off on Ripple Effect. Uh, it's it's going to be bright and sunny all the time now. But if a player needs the cycle to change for some reason, say you want to do a shot in the rain, um, maybe you need some snow effects or something like that, you can use the weather rod, ask the players who are on, like, hey, do you mind if I turn the rain on for a second? Turn it on, get your shot. Or maybe you want to charge Creeper Farm and you're trying to AFK that and no one's on. So you can turn the farm on with the weather rod and go at it yeah these are all quick fixes for something i felt was broken this season on ripple effect like we don't need that much rain yeah the only only thing is like it can get taken advantage of yeah you know if uh not careful people can use this thing at any time it's nice to i don't know communicate with all the other members yes let them know when you want to use it or if you can use it because some, some people might be recording and, you know, someone's using that weather rod to disrupt your video. Yeah. Instead of, you know, yeah, it's nice because it's the, the weather's nice all the time. But if someone uses it, you know, and you're not ready for it, it, it could be, it's like a double-edged sword. Well, it should be obvious. Like, if you're playing on an SMP and you're getting ready to change something for every person on the SMP, 
you should ask before doing it. Yeah. Because you're right. You don't know if someone's recording or not. You don't want to ruin their take because you you wanted to charge a creeper real quick. Yeah. That being said, it looks like Winter's adding something else to the server where the channeling trident no longer needs a thunderstorm to be in use. Ooh. So every time you throw it and hit a mob, it'll hit them with lightning now. I think what it does is it activates the the thunderstorm for the like single tick of it hitting the mob. Okay. To activate the lightning. Now, would you say the whole weather rod and the you know channeling with no lightning would that be too far in vanilla? The weather rod, I understand because it's it's a hot fix for something we can't control. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, not just me, have been kind of complaining about the rain on the server. The channeling on the Trident might be too far, but it's one of those things where I'm just not going to use it. It's not like one of those where you should start complaining, like, ah, da, da. it's like, no, we're already pushing how far Ripple Effect is from vanilla. It's like, if you don't like it, just don't use it. Uh, I, I still think the Trident's kind of a wimpy weapon anyways. The fact that channeling can be now active all the time is something I felt should have been in the game anyways. Yeah. But it's not something I'm going to take advantage of. It's just not It's not part of my play style. Yeah, I have a couple tridents that actually do one or the other, channeling and riptide. It's nice to use the riptide in the rain, mm-hmm. but I've never... Well, first off, I, th- I think the whole weather rod thing is like across the line. We kind of cross the line right there. Mm-hmm. If we're able to manipulate the weather takes you out of vanilla having said that though it doesn't really i don't know you you don't have to use it yeah and it doesn't really take away from your gameplay or your minecraft experience i don't know besides you know the the thunderstorms you know waiting for the thunderstorm Mm -hmm. getting you know that challenge of getting the charge creeper with the uh channeling so i don't know you, you you're jumping over the line right there in my in that sense and this is where I also come in, like, we're not full-time YouTubers. We can't do, we can't sit down and say, I'm recording all day today. If I sit down to record, I have maybe two hours to get in some recording time. And that's it. So if I needed a thunderstorm, I, I need thunderstorm within a two-hour window. That's that's rare. That's hard. Right. Even with the new weather cycle. Right. That's true. So there's the opposite of that coin. It's also the fact that a lot of, not a lot, but some of these features that come from the modded community make it to the game. So you have that, oh, this is modded. This isn't like Minecraft. I don't like it. And then it becomes part of the game. Well, now what? You know, this is a thing now. You have to like it. It's in mm-hmm. vanilla Minecraft, kind of like the, you know, one player sleep type of deal. It, it's in there now. Like we can yeah. use that. It's not considered cheating. If If anyone considered that cheating, I never did, but. Yeah, some of these things come to the game and make your experience a lot better. So why not use a little bit now? Mm-hmm. It it's definitely it helps out with content and multiplayer servers for sure. Just that little bit of modded. I'm not a big fan of like you know every item's like a different item you've never messed with before. It's fun you know to experience them for a little while, but I feel like yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like the modded just gets old after a while. You move on mm-hmm. to another modded mod pack so yeah and i want to reiterate this everything we've been doing on ripple feels like an addition to the game yeah it doesn't feel like we're changing the core of the game it's just helping content creators do their thing so far Mm -hmm. it's nice to experiment a little bit with the smp yeah you know we've done we've done vanilla for the past so many years yeah four years well over four years yeah why not switch it up a little bit yeah um, and like you look at Ripcoin, our custom currency, I've felt that that's been a huge improvement over diamonds. Yeah. Diamonds are essentially worthless on the Ripple Effect server right now. Everyone has villagers you can trade for. I can trade for an entire diamond set of armor and tools with just three villagers at my base. Okay. They all trade iron too. So I have them linked to my iron farm. So I literally just grab five stacks of iron. I go through and I trade all the iron with the three villagers. That gives me a stack plus 32 emeralds. And then I just trade those same emeralds for all the tools and armor. Yeah. (laughs) Like, that's how easy it is for me to create replacement gear. 
Mm-hmm. You got the grindstone. If that, you know, what you're trading for has enchantments on it, you can always take it down to, to nothing. Yeah, the enchantments aren't great. I, I don't have library villagers yet, librarians. Mm-hmm. That will hopefully be coming soon. But it's one of those where I got to build a structure above the ground. <laughs> and I just, I don't, I know how the interior of the building needs to look. I just don't know how the exterior, I might just build the interior, get it in place and then go, okay, I need to put a shell on this somehow. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like villagers are more modded than most of the game. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot to do with the villagers. You can get pretty much anything. You can trade anything mm-hmm. to villagers nowadays. And, uh, yeah, that that feels modded right there, just because it's such an OP mob with the villagers. Oh yeah, for sure. But hey, it's legal. This is Minecraft. <laughs> it's, it's it's legal in Minecraft. Yeah, you work with what you get. You know, if the mechanics work like this, then that's the way it's intended. Though I did notice uh, some tweets lately that have been expressing how you know the mods or the yeah the mods of the game. Am I saying that right? People, the creators of the game, developers. The devs. There you go. The devs, yeah. They have a certain way they want the game to be played, and that's why they implement these mechanics. And uh, Mm -hmm. like, for instance, the warden. You go down there. As of right now, like, like the tweet said, there's no reason to go down there and fight the warden. Yep. And there's no reason to really kill him. He has, he has what, over 200 hearts or something like that? Something ridiculous. 250. Yeah, so why? There's no reason to kill him. I think the developers intend the gameplay to, you know, just work around him. So, yeah, the, they set these mechanics to challenge you in certain ways mm. to make the game a certain way. I don't know if I explained that right. And see, the big thing is the warden doesn't drop any XP. Yeah. And you would think a, a mob with that kind of health would drop an absolute ton of XP. Like, look at the dragon. I think the dragon has maybe two-thirds of the hit points the warden does, and it drops massive amounts of XP. Now, imagine the amount of XP a warden would drop, and now imagine how easy it would be to farm said warden. Right. You build a block or a platform up in the sky, surround it with skulk sensors and uh, what's the screaming one? Shrieker. Shrieker. And you you just run around spawning warden after warden after warden. I don't know if they take fall damage. That'd be nice to know. But you can get them dropped down a drop shoot to where they're one hit. Hit it t- a couple times with the sword in the ankles. And now you have a massive XP farm. OP. OP XP farm. Like it would make enderenders look like child's play. Yeah, developers definitely balance these things out to where you can't do that. At least most of the time. Yeah, I was going to say, and I think the Mojang devs realize that, and that's why the Warden doesn't drop anything, including XP right now. Yeah. Now, the the, the snapshot we got is ex- experimental, so things are subject to change, especially the loot. Yep. Not even close to being done. No. But it's nice we got to have a little look at it. That's another thing, you know, is the, the whole Deep Dark and Warden spawning out of the ground, this is different than any vanilla game that we played. It, it feels modded also. Yeah. You know, just the different animations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like, you you have to, I don't know how to say this, there's a fine line. Because if you were to go back five years and show a Minecraft player a lot of the stuff that's in vanilla Minecraft today, they would assume it was a modded version of the game. Oh, yeah, it's changed so much. It's changed so much. I mean, just looking at the Nether alone, everyone talked earlier that the Nether was supposed to be this wasteland barren area and then all of a sudden in one update full of life Mm -hmm. so yep bunch of new mobs been implemented Mm -hmm. especially in five years but yeah five years ago you'd look at the warden in the deep dark you'd be like oh what kind of mod is this Mm -hmm. well in the game now (laughs) everyone would assume you could dig into the ground like the warden does yeah (laughs) it's nice having king bee dogs there because you know he is the creator of the ether Mm -hmm. which is another dimension in the game but you know that's modded but what if he is to bring it to minecraft then it's it was no long it's no longer mod that's what i'm getting at here you know things are modded till it's not modded simple enough you are exactly correct on that Mm -hmm. remember when the elytra came out yep some people were upset this is this is 
this isn't Minecraft anymore, everyone said. Mm -hmm. This doesn't feel like Minecraft. And granted, when you got the wings at first, it wasn't all that useful until the rockets came, but... Yeah, the wings were essentially just a parachute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Well, and then people started realizing you could punch two bow yourself to propel yourself forward. Mm -hmm. And then everyone became pin cushions. Yep, I remember that. And then we finally got rockets. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all that would be considered modded. Every, every update that comes out gets a little more modded, but it's not modded. It's in the game. Mm. I just wanted to bring that up because I felt there were some people talking about how far SMPs are pushing it now. Like, especially Hermitcraft, they brought the custom textures into the world. And then the whole moon story, it was heavily modded and stuff. It's like, sometimes, like, I think Winter said it best last time I was recording with it. We've been building the same farms for years now. Mm -hmm. It's nice to change it up a bit. Yeah. We're not changing the game up in this massive direction. We're changing the game up to tell stories better. Yeah, we're kind of giving Minecraft its own update. Yeah. It's not the wild update, it's the Drop Llama update. <laughs> yeah. Airdrop Llamas in Ripcoin so far are definitely some of my favorite things that we've put into the server. And it's proved a point to be useful and stuff. Mm -hmm. I absolutely adore it. I, I love the fact that I don't have to waste time mining for diamonds if I really need an item. As long as I'm being active on the server and playing, I'll have a currency to go spend in other players' shops to interact with other players with. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of times I run to the shopping district, buy something real quick, you run across somebody, and there's always a chance for content right there. Yeah, though I do have more Ripcoin than I do diamonds now. I have an entire shulker box full of Ripcoin right now. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Doing good at the uh, Guardian shop, huh? No. Honestly, after that very first wave of people buying, uh, most of it's just been playing because I've been consistently active for the last week and a half, two weeks. Okay. So I've been able to get a lot of llamas. I went, that being said, early in the season, I went almost a week and a half of not getting an airdrop llama. Ooh. I was starting to think it was bugged and I just wasn't getting them anymore. But then it all came around and I'm just getting them constantly. Yeah, if there's only so many people on your odds are better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, you know, with the mechanics. If you're not playing, then why should you be rewarded the rip coin? Exactly. I do like the fact that Winter also put it in loot chest. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to find some elsewhere, not just the llama. Exactly. But if you need some, go find some. Yep. Our wandering trader doesn't trade with emeralds. It trades with rip coin. Mm -hmm. So there's another way to spend them. Yeah. The mini blocks... We have with the Wandering Trader is awesome. I love it. Yeah. They're nice, easy decorations. You see that in a lot of SMPs now. Mm hmm Mini blocks being used. Mm hmm And who knows? Maybe Minecraft will give it to us in vanilla one day. Yeah, I feel mini blocks are something that should definitely be in the game. Mm hmm We're seeing, like, you can get a skeleton skull in the ancient cities now. So they're playing more yeah. with stuff like that. Granted, a skeleton skull is very vanilla. That's been in the game for forever. But maybe we'll maybe we'll start to get more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping after seeing that we could uh, maybe a little bit more attainable. But uh, I think that's going to do it for today's show. Before I have Jimbo read us out, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting the show. Our milk level patrons are Omni, Croc, Fragile Rock, Casey Plays Games, Ob, Viperous Tuna, and Wire Guy. If you too would like to get access to exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each each month please consider joining at patreon.com slash the withering effect. And if you like the show, you can share with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, rate and follow us so you never miss a future episode. Or if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at thewitheringeffect.com, tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links are in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer, Carl. He helps make sure the show ends up where it should be. And the amazing music you hear in the intro and outro is created by the one and only Decoy. Everyone's social media info can be found in the show notes. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for getting withered with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys.